Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update, pup date time, 26 and 27 months. I got a little bit behind uh, in the last couple of months, just been busy with life in general, so I'm kind of right in between what would be a, a 26 month and a 27 month video, so I figured I would just knock them all both together. If you're new to this channel, my name is Sean, this is Bull Mastiff ND. And the goal of this channel is just to give you guys an update on what it's like living with a bull mastiff. I've been making this style of video among many other style of videos about our bull mastiff Tua ever since the day that we brought him home. And I just update you guys every single month and weekly with other videos just what everything's like. So if anybody's doing research on a bull mastiff or currently has one, you get to see everything that I'm going through with him. Again, I always stress that I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just sharing my personal experience with the Bull Mastiff breed to hopefully help out anybody else that's interested. So if you are interested in Bull Mastiff, stick around. So the first thing that we dealt with this month that kind of stuck out to me was we dealt with our first ear infection with Tua. He was showing all the classic signs of a fungal ear infection. Um, his ear was, you know, red and a little bit scaly. He was scratching at it. Um, he was doing the, the classic head shakes when they have an ear infection. It, it smelled a little bit. He had all that brown wax that was building up in it, you know, more than normal. And uh, I kind of went a different route here. We, uh, it would have taken us about two weeks to get into our normal vet. And if we went to the emergency vet, they're just so crazy expensive that uh, I didn't really consider this a true emergency. So I started doing research on my own. And I just want to say I'm, I'm not recommending this to anybody. I would only recommend that you follow exactly what your vet says to do. But I started doing some research and I found that to treat fungal ear infections, generally what the vet will do is give you a cream to put in their ear that contains, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, but clot rimazole. And uh, one thing that you can do and that we ended up doing is, this is a very common ingredient in um, like athlete's foot creams, things like that. Uh, the one I got was for jock itch. And uh, you just got to look for that clot, clot rimazole one percent, and that is what the that's the main ingredient that's in the the cream that a vet would give you to treat a, a dog's ear infection if it's the fungal one. So I did that, and basically all I would do was wrap a baby wipe or a wet paper towel around my finger, just kind of dampen it, and then uh, kind of completely cover that with the cream, and then go ahead and rub that in his ear. And you know, I figured, like I said, I'm not recommending this because anything can, can go wrong, but I figured, you know, worst case, it, if it does get worse, I'll, I'll take him to the emergency vet because then it would be, you know, an emergency. And if not, then we'll see our regular vet in two weeks if it just kind of stays the same. So after doing this twice a day for about 10 days, it actually, it worked and it cleared it up. So I guess uh, in, in our case, it, it was, uh, we had a great uh, outcome and uh, his ear went back to 100% after about 10 days, like I said, so that is a potential option for you guys to look into if you uh, figure that your dog does have a, a yeast or a fungal ear infection. Again, not necessarily recommending this, but in a pinch, something to look into. Save you a bunch of money. I think we spent four or $5 on the tube of cream, so not bad at all. But now I will get into the main things that I touch on in this type of video every single month. And like usual, we will start with his growth. So at the 25 months old video, Tua was 161 pounds. And he had not gained weight from the previous month, 24 to 25 months. He was stuck at 161 for that entire month. And I, at the time, had said that was significant because that was only the second time ever that he had not gained weight. But it was also, you know, fairly normal because they're supposed to put on weight until the age of two to three. 
So I anticipated that that growth was not over, but that that was normal, that it was slowing and he was gonna have months where he doesn't gain weight now. So we just got him weighed in now. And with it being, you know, about a month and a half after that video, like I said, we're kind of right in between the 25, 26 month here, or 26, 27 month here. He is now 164 pounds. So in that time span, he gained another three, which, uh, like I said, I anticipated that the growth wasn't completely over, but that it was going to continue to slow. So where we go from here is anybody's guess. Um, could he touch 170? I would say at this point, yeah, he probably will at some point or another. Just even if he only puts on, you know, half a pound every, you know, two or three months from here on out, we're eventually going to touch that, um, which is pretty crazy. And, and keep in mind, he's, he's bigger than the normal or what the breed standard would call for in a bull mastiff. Um, he's, he's much taller which adds to his weight. He's, you know, between 30 and 31 inches at the shoulder, which is two to three inches taller than what the breed standard would call for. And then also with his weight now at 164 pounds, that's also much more than what the breed standard would call for. But it's not unheard of for these, uh, these dogs to get this big, um, but just maybe not anticipate if you were to get one that your bull mastiff would reach this size, probably more like 27, 28 inches at the shoulder and anywhere from 125 to as much as 150. Although, like I said, it's not unheard of, and we'll see where Tua ends up, and like I always say, I'll be here to document it. Food is the next thing that we will touch on. Right now, we feed Tua a, a diet that consists of raw food and also kibble. However, that raw food is kind of dominating his diet. Um, depending on the day, depending on the week, we feed him 80 to 100% raw food and 20 to 0% kibble. Um, I love doing the raw diet with him. It's uh, a great way to get your dog more natural, better food. Um, it's better for their skin, their coat, their digestive system, um, joints, just everything overall. It, like I always say, it's kind of like feeding feeding yourself you know, processed food all day or feeding yourself really good you know whole foods and uh, it's, it's definitely something that's intimidating at first I had never fed any dogs that I've owned in my life uh, raw diet before so I was very skeptical very uneasy uncertain going into it and I've had dogs my whole life and uh, the more I learned the more I researched and the more I fed it to Tua and slowly worked up to the diet that we're at now I learned how great it is for the dog um, it is more expensive than feeding your dog kibble, but uh, if you're able to, I would encourage everybody to at least do their own research and at least experiment with it and see if it fits your life and your dog's life and go from there. But uh, it's definitely great for the dog. Haven't really heard from anybody that's had bad experiences with it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on the raw food diet as far as that goes. Socialization is the next thing that I will touch on. So like I say in all these videos, um, we don't socialize Tua as much anymore, but when you bring a Bull Mastiff puppy home, you want to make socialization a new part-time job for yourself because this dog is going to get very big like we just kind of previously talked about and you want him or her to be great with people and animals and just all sorts of situations or you could have a problem on your hands. Um, take them everywhere with you. Uh, Home Depot, Lowe's are, are good kind of chain stores that you can get your dogs into. And then a lot of the chain pet stores obviously allow dogs as well. And go on walks and expose them to all kinds of sights, sounds, smells, people, animals, anything you can think of. And do this daily, uh, especially that first year. And just get your pup used to, used to all that stuff. We did get to a, on a couple of quick walks this week, but we didn't encounter any people or any animals. Uh, as the weather warms up here more, we'll, we'll do some more socialization with him. But like I said, we don't do a whole lot anymore, at least compared to that first year when we had him growing up. Um, but socialization, in my opinion, definitely the most important thing you can do to set your dog and yourself up for success in owning your dog. Energy is the next thing that we will touch on. And Bull Mastiffs are known for being pretty lazy dogs, and Tua has definitely 
fallen into this category as what I would consider a pretty lazy dog most of the time. Uh, I just want to stress again though, like I usually do, that first year, year and a half, this is not going to be the case with your Bull Mastiff unless you just get a really lazy one. But puppies are going to be puppies and puppies are difficult guys. There's no really good way around that. Um, regardless of breed, at least in my experience, the energy is going to be high. Um, they're, as they're teething, you know, they're going to be nipping and chewing on things. And it's just something that you got to get through. So if you're getting a bull mastiff, just anticipating that this dog is going to be a couch potato from day one, uh, get that out of your head right away because that's not going to be the case. However, as they fall into in, in line, I guess, and as, as they mature and start reaching that age two, um, at least in my case with Tua, he's, he's fallen into that category of being a pretty lazy dog. Uh, I will notice over these last couple months, as we're cooped up inside most of the time, it, since it is so cold here, he's starting to have a few more higher energy days where he's a little bit more restless inside, kind of running around, kind of messing with uh, our other little dog and maybe us and the kids a little bit, but it's nothing like if you had a super high energy dog. He spends like 75% of his days just lounging around, sleeping or chewing or just kind of hanging out by us. And uh, he is very low energy now compared to, you know, most breeds, but he, they, do, they do still have their high energy days. And uh, it, it's not like a dog that you don't have to exercise at all, but the requirements are much less compared to a higher energy breed. Um, and again, just don't anticipate when you bring that puppy home that it's going to be a couch potato from day one. You are going to have a year, year and a half, maybe two years tops where you are going to have to exercise them a little bit and they are going to have to burn off some steam. But for the most part, as they mature, you're going to have a, a pretty lazy dog breed. Drooling is the next thing that we'll touch on. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. If you watch these videos regularly, you know Tua is a drooler. Uh, but it's it's not something that I feel like is a deal breaker. And I, I feel like the bull mastiff breed in general, this is, you know, too much of a big deal gets made out of this. If you're used to having any kind of large dog breed, you're used to the food bowl and water bowl kind of being a messy area and a messy time around meal times. And I'd say, you know, 80, 90% of bull mastiff drooling is around that meal time, just like with any large breed dog. Uh, they do drool in other times, like if they're hot and panting outside, um, if they're stressed out, things like that, if they're smelling you make food, you know, things like that. But it's nothing that you can't kind of figure out how to just deal with, at least in my opinion. They don't just wake up with drool hanging off their mouth, go to bed with drool hanging off their mouth. It's not like that. There's just certain things that spur the drooling on and you figure out pretty quick when those times are going to be and you learn to live with it and deal with it. Um, if you're a very, very clean person and you've only had small dogs your whole life, then maybe it would be a you know bigger learning curve or something like that for you. But if you're used to larger dog breeds, I mean, I, I previously had a Doberman Pinscher and he drooled a lot too and they're not known as drooling dogs, you know, especially around mealtime. So you're, you're used to that, uh, that typical drooling mess around mealtimes and uh, water dishes and things like that, or if they're running and panting. Uh, barking is the last thing that we'll touch on. Bull Mastiffs are known as the silent watchdog, and uh, they're not known to bark very often, and, and Tua generally is uh, fallen right into that as well. Although, like I always say in these videos, he does bark in our backyard and only in our backyard, and it's generally when he's hearing um, things on the other side of the fence that he can't see. If a dog's barking at him at the other side of the fence that he can't see, he'll bark back. I actually put a video out uh, earlier this month, I believe. I videoed him barking at another dog on the other side of the fence. kind of what that sounds like. Um, 
but he'll never bark at a dog, you know, if they're actually face to face. It's only at the other side of a fence if he's having problems seeing them. Uh, he doesn't bark in our house really at all. Maybe he'll let out some small woofs if he's seeing something out the window, but uh, he, he definitely doesn't bark much. So if you are somebody that does not want a barking dog at all, definitely look into a bull mastiff or it's something else that you can maybe kind of check off for a reason to get one. But uh, they, they do bark, they aren't 100% silent, but I have heard of lots of people who say they've never heard their bull mastiff bark. So maybe Tua actually barks more than, than most bull mastiffs, but even him barking possibly more than most bull mastiffs, it's not very much, and it's only in one situation, and that's in our backyard. Other than that, guys, that's all I have for the update pup date 26-27 month update. Hopefully I don't get too far behind on the 28 and have to double down again, but uh, we'll see. And if you guys stuck around this long, I really do appreciate you watching through the whole video, and take care.